as a former military officer. That particular massacre is seen to be a well-planned operation. Whether it was an ambush, where the enemy tribes were lying in wait, or it was a full-on assault with high-powered military weapons. How is he going to address this issue? Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. Question from me without notice, and we go to Prime Minister. And on the 18th, which was on Sunday, two days ago, while the Prime Minister was busy uh, worrying about these political numbers in recruiting the governor for Milling Bay, my point is that uh, while all these things were happening, there was a mass massacre of more than 64 people in Sikkim and Kaikin tribes in Wapanamanda, Anga province. In the wake of the devastating Anga province massacre on February 18, 2024, which claimed the lives of over 64 individuals in the deadliest tribal conflict ever recorded in the Highlands region, the opposition raised grave concerns. During the February parliamentary session, Belden Nama, member of parliament for Vanamo Green and a former military officer, posed nine pointed questions to Prime Minister James Marapi. Mr. Nama drew attention to both the recent Enga tragedy and the 2019 Gila province incident, where 24 lives were similarly lost, emphasizing the urgent need for improved security measures. Underscoring the importance of concrete action, Mr. Nama called for the immediate implementation of the recommendations outlined in the Singarok Guns Report, which tackles the critical issue of gun violence in the country. And Mr. Acting Speaker, let me just take us back to and refresh our minds of another massacre that happened in, 2000, in July 2019, just six weeks after the Prime Minister got elected as the Prime Minister. In uh, Munima Karira village, in Tagali LLG in Taripore district in Ella province. In that massacre, Mr. Acting Speaker, more than 24 people, innocent men, women, and children were massacred. That massacre was strongly condemned by the United Nations on the 19th of July, 2019. And Prime Minister himself also sent a very strong warning, and I quote, I am coming for you. Mr. Speaker, since then, there has been mass killings, senseless killings, in Enga and Ella provinces, and also in some parts of our country. And from what I can recall, I have not had any reports in this parliament as to what the government has done to those murderers or so-called warlords. Mr. Speaker, the massacre on Sunday, the 18th of this month, just two days ago, is another dark moment in our nation's history. Mr. Speaker, from my expert view as a former military officer, that particular massacre is seen to be a well-planned operation, whether it was an ambush, where the enemy tribes were lying in wait, or it was a full-on assault with high-powered military weapons. Mr. Speaker, my questions to the Prime Minister are as follows. Number one, Mr. Speaker, what is your government's policy on combating law and order situations and the tribal warfare, which are spiraling out of control in our country? Number two, can the Prime Minister inform this Parliament and the people of our country what this government has done so far in combating the law and order situation and tribal warfare in our country? Number three, can the Prime Minister inform this House 
and the people of our country. How many of those murderers and so-called tribal warlords have been arrested and brought to justice? And if not, then why not? Number four, Mr. Speaker, can the Prime Minister also inform the, the Parliament and the people of this country what level of combat readiness is our military? I say our military because our military has been constantly been deployed in the state of emergencies up in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. What is the combat readiness of our military? Number five, what is the force readiness of our police force to combat law and order situation in our country that is escalating almost daily, every day? What is the force readiness? Number six, what is the operational readiness of both disciplinary forces? Number seven, what is the level of the morale of the disciplinary forces? If our disciplinary forces, their morale and the discipline is down, Mr. Speaker, it will be very difficult for them to be deployed and for them to effectively discharge their operational duties. What is the morale and discipline level of our soldiers, our policemen, our CIS personnel in our country? That sort of assessment, Mr. Acting Speaker, must be done so you know the level of readiness of your, of your three disciplinary, disciplinary forces. Number eight, Mr. Acting Speaker, what level of resources and manpower has the government expanded and deployed throughout the country in the SOEs? And I want the Prime Minister to provide this House with facts and figures. What are the government's plans and strategies to stop this nonsense? We have declared ourselves as, the, as a Christian country. And we are heading towards becoming the richest black Christian country on planet Earth. And yet, in the last five years, our law and order situation is that of a country that is not supposed to be a Christian country. Can the Prime Minister inform the nation as to his plans and strategies to stop these mass murderers, tribal warlords, and people who are taking uh, trading illegal arms in the country, how is he going to address this issue? I have on many occasions, Mr. Speaker, called on the government to table the single guns report on this floor of parliament and have it debated and have its recommendations implemented. Nothing has been done to date. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister and his government have an intelligence network that is readily available to be able to trace who is trading the guns, who is where the ammunitions have been brought in from. And it's a small country. We can have this information in our fingertips. What has, that has happened to the intelligence organization in the military, in the police force, and in the national intelligence organization? What are his plans to strengthen it? the intelligence agency and the intelligence apparatus in the country. Mr. Speaker, earlier in 2000, 2022, when I was appointed the chairman of Permanent Parliamentary Committee Chairman on Foreign Affairs, Defense, International Trade and Immigration, I made certain uh, proposals to the Prime Minister. My proposal to the Prime Minister to deal with law and order situation in the country and with the tribal warfare in the country was to establish 
a ministry of PNG Homeland Security and Department of PNG Homeland Security. The, the proposal basically was for this particular ministry to deal with law and order situation in our country. And Mr. Speaker, my question to the Prime Minister is that can the Prime Minister take my proposal into serious consideration, decommission one of those ministries who have no utility, and establish a Ministry of Homeland Security and Department of Homeland Security where you have the top notch soldiers, the policemen, the immigration, NIO, and all these security apparatus put into this particular uh, ministry and the department to deal with law and order situation. And let's deal with it once and for all. Mr. Speaker, why don't we adopt or we establish this ministry, take advantage of the, our defense cooperation agreement with the U.S. and implement the policies that we want to deal with the law and order situation? Mr. Speaker, my concerns are that put a stop for these murderers and tribal warlords from infiltrating into other peaceful towns and cities of our country. With these Connect PNG, they, these people will be leaving their homes and running for safety to peaceful towns and cities with their culture. And they will go and destroy these other towns and cities, and it has already happened in Western Province. Mr. Acting Speaker, what are the Prime Minister's plans? The overarching security plan on dealing with law and order situation and the tribal warfare in our country. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, I may like to talk big, but thank you, Lord. Uh, Member Blobani Green. The economic growth and everything else that's happening will be totally redundant without securing the security of our country. And so, <coughs> excuse me. Mr. Acting Speaker, I want to give respect to the good question asked by the member for Wainimo Green. While so politics, it may have a political undertone, but let's remove that political undertone. His question is a correct series of questions. He's asked an important question for our nation. It deserves a fair answer and a correct answer. And uh, we, as head of this government, with the assistance of uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, who has a handle on the law and justice sector, and he's been doing a wonderful job in this space, and our police minister we will construct a reply. And if I could preserve a first right of reply tomorrow morning, to answer these questions that is in our national interest. I repeat this statement many times, the easiest, easiest and the best contribution our people can do to this country, which is absolutely free, is respect to the rule of law. And uh, we have been working in this matter in Enga province, as well as Hela and others. Uh, for the inference or reference to the, to the matter that took place in uh, Karida electorate, in my uh, Karida village in my electorate, I want to inform this house, uh, certain arrests have been made, Certain community arrests has been made. Certain people who perpetuate this have found, uh, found their way into the grave by, by, by their own doings. I want to give uh, an assurance to this House that tomorrow when I respond to all the good questions the leader for Wynamo Green has asked, uh, uh, we appreciate the opposite for concern. And this one is a sad concern. It's a bipartisan concern. Tomorrow I will respond to the eight or nine questions that the uh, leader for Wynamo Green has uh, made response. But be rest assured. Uh, Police Minister and all of us are working to attend to this at the very earliest, short-term, mid-term and long-term solutions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.